Hey everybody, it looks like Oregon remembered it was winter time and thought it would be a good idea to make up for lost time. We've gotten uh, about a foot of snow in the last week and uh, we're expecting another 10 to 12 inches today, which is very uncommon for this area. But I thought I'd talk for a minute about uh, how I got into sawmilling and how I ended up with a wood miser. And uh, for the guys that are thinking about getting into it, I thought I'd share where I got started, where I'm at now, and where I plan to go, uh, including the purchase of this medium duty diesel cab over truck that has a dump bed on it. Um, I think that's gonna be a, a big help uh, getting me where I wanna go. I bought my first sawmill because my family and I moved out to 13 acres in the woods and I thought it would be fun to use some of the logs that I was ending up with after winter storms to uh, make lumber out of instead of just cut up for firewood. Now this HM126 uh, from Woodland Mills out of Canada was a great starter mill. Um, it had a 9 horsepower Kohler engine. It had a a blade lube bottle. It uh, it could handle a 28 inch diameter, I think, log, 10 feet long, uh, stationary, obviously. But for what I was looking for, this thing, I mean, I had absolutely no problems with it. Um, it was it was a lot of sawmill for the money. I think I paid just over three thousand dollars after having it shipped and with a 10 pack of blades. On top of being a fun new toy, now I had lumber that I could use around the house for free. So I built the kids a sandbox and then a playhouse. Like a lot of people, I started posting pictures on Facebook of what I was sawing and people started asking me, hey, how much for this? How much for that? And it was something that I hadn't really thought about. And then the next thing I know, I'm making a pair of live edge shelves for $1,200 and that really got me thinking. We decided my wife was going to open a high-end hair salon and we didn't want it to be like any other salon around and I had the idea that I would make all the furniture for the salon so now the wood that I'm sawing is becoming live edge retail shelving and combined with some reclaimed wood and the drone I made our front desk and then out of rafters that I took out of a building a couple summers ago. I resawed them into mirror frames for our stations. And this work got me work actually at another salon. This is about the time I felt like I was outgrowing my mill. And so I started fabricating a trailer base for it to make it not only mobile, but I would now be able to handle a log that was 21 feet long. And that's when I really started sawing for other people. The last guy I sawed for was a buddy of mine who doesn't live too far away. And he's also got land with trees. And he started asking me about if I thought I might want to sell the mill. And uh, that's kind of when I decided, well, this might be my opportunity to, to upsize. And uh, he ended up offering me about two grand more than I paid for the mill. Um, obviously, it was worth more because it was mobile and and had a larger capacity but i i felt like it was an opportunity i couldn't pass up so the question then became how am i going to pay for the rest of the mill um i had about a third of what i needed and you can finance them that's not a problem but i uh i wasn't sure i was going to be able to make enough money to to cover the the payment and I didn't want to get myself in trouble with something that I wasn't 100% sure uh, I was going to be able to utilize effectively. And so I ended up talking to my boss. And without hesitation, he offered to loan me the, the rest of the money that I needed. And actually, after I bought that mill in August of 2017... I was able to make enough money on weekends 
still without any advertising, to give him $500 a month uh, every month since I bought it. And uh, it's, it's, really, it's really paying for itself. If you can find your market, it's very easy to make money with a sawmill. After almost two months of waiting, it was time to pick up my sawmill and receive my training, which Woodmiser will spend an entire day with you to train and make sure that you know what you're doing when you leave there. Now I already had people waiting for me to come saw for him once I got my new mill. This guy I met through Facebook and sawed some oak and sequoia. This next guy I have sawn for three times now and he's already scheduling a fourth time. My plan for later this spring is to take these two big fir trees down and build a 40 by 60 shop right here. And uh, I'd like to have a kiln and um, probably use my old shop, which is in pretty bad shape uh, for air drying. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, uh, I, I picked up this Isuzu last week. It's a 1990 and it's only got 54,000 miles on it. It has a PTO dump bed, which is cool. It's got this storage compartment behind the cab. Good tires, everything seems to work. It's not super powerful, but I think this will make it a lot easier for me to get logs home and lumber and firewood, whatever. The only thing I've had time to do so far is I took off the pindle hitch it had and I put a, I welded a receiver hitch in I need to swap out the plug to work with my my sawmill but all in all I'm pretty happy it's got another toolbox under the bed there I think it's gonna work good if you figure out what you want to do figuring out how to do it can fall into place maybe easier than you think um, I've been in excavation for 25 years and I'm working towards making this my last season. I'm hoping to do the sawmill and the woodwork full time so that uh, I can spend time near my house and my young kids and just do more of what I want to do. This is just the story of how I did it. Your story will likely be different. The the point, I guess, is you got to try. And uh, with that, it's starting to snow lightly. I'm going to go inside and uh, edit some video. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm.